Hello guys, what's going on? My name is Tom from Accelerate and welcome to our speed run of a loan calculator. So I've put up a poll on Facebook and this one clearly st stood out. So everybody was asking about loan calculators and how it works in Excel um, and to have a little bit of dynamic uh, look and feel to it as you can change the interest rate or period of this loan and how exactly it works in Excel. So let's get straight into this. I'm very excited to bring this one for you today. Right, so I'm here in my desktop and I've already created a Excel spreadsheet called Loan Calculator. I'm just going to go into that. And guys, just a little reminder, let's get that to the 100 subscriber mark. Click that subscribe down below and remember to click on the bell notification. So if I release any new uh, uh, videos, you will be notified for any Excel awesomeness. Um, and let's get straight into this Loan Calculator. So I've created this template here, the Loan Calculator template. So in B4, we've got the loan amount that we're going to take out. B6 is the interest rate, uh, B8 is the loan period in years, and in B10 I've provided you for a payment type, so we're going to set it up and code it so it can do a monthly or yearly calculation, and then in B12 that will be our yearly payment, that's the actual answer that we're looking for here in D12. Right, so first of all, let's put in some scroll bars as a nice dy dynamic mechanism to change the interest rates and the period for our loan as well. So I'm going to go into our developer tab here. So if you don't know how to access the developer tab, video descriptions above for my first video explaining exactly how to do that. And then I'm going to go to insert and we're going to go, go for an ActiveX control named scroll bar. So we're going to choose the scroll bar and here in D6 I'm just going to create my scroll bar here. So there it is and I'm going to hit control C and here in D8 Control V. I'm just going to place the scroll bar nice as well. So let's get some uh, properties going for the scroll bar. So you're going to click left click on the scroll bar, the first scroll bar for interest rate, and you're going to click on properties. So we're going to put it a minimum of 1% for interest rate and the max let's go for a 20%. So you can increase this as you please. You can go to 100%, uh, whatever you want it to be but let's cap it at 20 and then a small change should be 1 so there's the small change and a large change there it is let's put that to 5 we close it and you will see, notice that the property of the scroll bar changes as well so I'm going to just do the exactly same for the second scroll bar I'm going to left click on it I'm going to hit properties and then our minimum should be 1 here and our max let's cap it at 30 and then a small change is one here and our large change let's change that to five as well so we close that off and there we see the scroll bars have has been uh, coded via the properties and now let's go into our visual basic so you double -click, left click on the first scroll bar for interest rate and that takes us straight into the visual basic where we can add some line of code so for our first uh, scroll bar we're going to say range and we're going to give it a range cell number here it's going to be f6 so remember that's where our interest rate will sit and we're going to take the value it's going to equal whatever our scroll bar one dot value is there we go and we're going to just divide it by 100 as well because we want a interest uh, percentage so we divide it to get a percentage number as well so I'm going to close off the Visual Basic. I'm going to double click on our loan period in years scroll bar as well. So that takes us back into the Visual Basic and we can literally copy this line of code here. I'm going to hit highlight everything, Control C, and we're going to say Control V. So the range of our period is in F8 and it should be scroll bar 2. There we go. And we're not going to divide by 100 because it's going to be an absolute number in years and not a percentage. So that's the, all, that's the only code that we need for this calculator. I'm going to get out of that. And now we're going to add in some option but buttons as well. So we're going to go back to insert and we're going to go to our ActiveX control and you will see there's an option button. So I'm just going to put that in. So that's our first option button. And I'm going to hit the properties here. And I'm just going to change the caption here. Option button caption to let's say monthly going to hit out of that I'm going to hit control C and control V 
to duplicate that option button and I'm going to change the caption as well. So I'm going to go into properties and monthly becomes yearly. So that's the two configurations. We can also go into quarterly or daily, uh, but uh, for this um, tutorial, I'm just going to stick with monthly and yearly. So if you're going to hit exit out of design mode, you'll see the scroll bars works a little bit and you can see it changes the value as well. So it gives us a decimal point, but it's an easy fix. You're going to go to home and you're going to click on the little percentage button here. So that will change it to a percentage. So if you go up, it dynamically changes our percentage range here as well. So I'm going to leave it at 10. And for a loan period, you will click on that and then you will see it also changes the years as well. Very nice functionality that we've got going there. And I'm going to leave it at 10 years. And then also if you click on the option button, uh, monthly or yearly, you can choose either. All right, so now I'm going to link this option button as well. So I'm going to go back to my developer tab and I'm going to go to my design mode. I'm going to click on our first option button and go back to properties. So I'm going to link a cell to whatever we choose here. So in the properties, you can see there's a linked cell and I'm going to place it at G6. And I'm going to close that off and I'm going to go for so if you choose yearly I'm going to go out of the design mode and see if you choose monthly it becomes true and if you choose yearly it becomes false so I'm just going to hit this as well I'm going to say in G8 I'm just going to say equals G6 it should be false and then what needs to happen if it is false so if it is yearly we leave it as is but if it's monthly we want these percentage and the number of years to be divided and multiplied by 12 because it's monthly now. So in H6, I'm going to go to equals if the logical test is if this G6 equals true, what needs to happen? I'm going to take F and I'm going to divide it by 12. If it's false, I'm just, I just want F6 to show and I'm going to close the bracket and enter so that gives us a nice percentage on a monthly basis and not on a yearly basis anymore perfect i'm going to do the same for the period here i'm going to say control c in h6 and i'm going to hit con in h8 i'm going to say control v but remember we don't need to divide the percentage we're going to go to multiply i'm going to take out the division signal and i'm going to put in a multiply and also it shows a percentage but it's a quick fix you just click on the comma style here so that's perfect so 10 years equals 120 months so if it was one year only 12 months okay so that's perfect that's exactly what we need and you can hide this as well if you want so you can put it into a white color here to, to hide this code i'm just going to leave it open for now so what needs to happen now so Let's first test it. If we've got to click on yearly, it should only show the exact same amounts here. If we click on monthly, it changes. It divides 10% by 12 and multiply the period by 12. Uh, that's perfect. All right. So what we, do we need? So in yearly payment, we're going to say equals payment, PMT. Open the bracket. What is the rate? So the rate is the interest rate. We're going to link it to H6, comma. What is the period, the number of periods? We can go to H8, comma. What is the present value of uh, the loan amount? So that would be the loan amount here in D4. That's the present value that we're going to take out for this loan. Divide. What is the future value? So a loan needs to be paid off up until it gets to naught. So that's zero. And then comma, the type is are we going to do this payment at the end of the period or at the be beginning of the period? So I'm just going to go by default the end of the period and I'm going to hit enter. So it's going to show zero rands here currently because we don't have a loan amount here at all. So let's say we're going to take a loan amount of 100,000 rand. So I'm going to say less because we're taking it out. 100,000 and I'm just going to give it a nice rand denomination for the currency and you can see clearly it already calculated the yearly payment for us 
uh, it's a thousand three hundred and twenty one rands uh, per month that I'm going to pay off for 10 years so that this works perfectly so that's exactly what the loan calculator does let's change that to yearly so that obviously increases so per year I need to pay 16,274 rand and let's test this as well so to see if this amount works as it should and obviously you can also play around with the interest so the higher the interest rate the higher the payment obviously and the less the period the higher the amount as well because you've got a, a, a lower amount of time to pay off this loan and if you take a higher amount the interest is going to increase but it's going to be a lower payment so this works perfectly so let's test if this is indeed the correct answer so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly do a, a amortization schedule here on the side it's just for our sanity sake check so we start off with a period we start off with an opening balance and now this is our payment that we currently calculated here but this is split between capital and interest so I'm going to put in capital and interest there we go and that's going to leave us with a closing balance closing balance there we go perfect so I'm just going to use the same formatting that we've got here uh, I'm just going to put everything nice here. I'm just going to put in a border as well. So we've got 10 periods currently in years. So I'm just going to put in 1, 2, and I'm going to drag down up until 10. There we go. And then we've got an opening balance. I'm just going to equal that to our 100,000 here. I'm going to say equal less than 100,000. So we start off with a positive. The payment is equals the payment that we did here. I'm just going to say D12 enter, but I, I want it to do a absolute value. So I'm just going to hit shift 4 to put in dollar signs between uh, before the D as well as before the 12. And then you can shift this as well. So I just um, clicked on the drop down list and it will automatically put in our payments that we're doing. So it's, it, remember it's uh, between our capital and interest. So the interest is equals the 100,000 Rand multiplied by the interest rate just like that and we're just going to put in the interest rate as absolute as well so before the H I'm going to hit shift 4 for dollar sign and before the 6 dollar sign awesome and I'm just going to hit the double click so it's not, going to, it's not going to make any sense now because there's no opening balance and obviously the capital is the difference between the payment and the interest so you say equals payment less interest and that will give us the capital amount that we're going to pay off and you can drag that as well it's not going to make sense because it's not calculating the interest currently and the closing balance is equals the opening balance less the payment plus the interest there we go perfect and our new opening balance for our second period is equals the closing balance for our first period awesome so I'm just going to double click on that, drop down, double click on that. Now, if our calculation worked out as it should, I'm just going to put in some borders as well. You will see the payment is exactly what we paid. And at the end of the 10 years, we're going to be left with a zero amount here. Perfect. So if let's, let's test it a little bit. So let's say we've put in 11 years. So we still have one month left to pay so what you can do is just highlight the last column drag it down so we've got 11 years and that gets us back to naught perfect let's test it a little bit let's go for 12 years so let's go for 12 years here there it updates and now we're still left with one one drag it down we're always going to be left with a naught so this just tells us the amortization schedule is perfect it shows this payment is indeed what we need to pay off over the 12 year period here gives, gets us to a zero so you can do a quick sum this is the total interest that you are going to pay off for, for over the 12 year period if you're going to uh, get a loan of 100,000 rand guys this has been a, quite a quick speed run but it definitely shows you the theory and the practice um, behind loan calculators 
So guys, once again, thank you very much for tuning in. My next episode is going to shift it a little bit. So we're going to go for an investment calculator. So let's say we've got 100,000 Rand and we want to invest it in different places. What's going to happen? So guys, that's for our next episode. Please remember to hit that this, um, subscribe button. And um, for me from Stone from Accelerate, cheers.